Welcome to Believers Mandate. Please like our videos, share and subscribe. Thank you and God bless you. Number two, sacrifice is an instrument of atonement. In Proverbs chapter 21 verse 14, he said, even a secret gift pacified anger. And so the second thing that makes sacrifice powerful is that it's an instrument of atonement. Now, when we speak of atonement here, we are not talking about expiation and propitiation necessarily. That's in the corridor of salvation. Now, see the problem with many Christians. When you start talking about things like sacrifice, they tell you there's no sacrifice. Jesus has sacrificed everything. <laughs> Be careful. The sacrifice of Jesus, amongst other things, is exclusively for salvation, which deals with forgiveness of sin, imputation of eternal life, and righteousness. There's nothing you can do for your sins to be forgiven. There's nothing you can do to receive eternal life. There's nothing you can do to become righteous. It is only by accepting what Jesus has done that all of that will be imparted. But brothers and sisters, for you to have authority, for you to have positions, positions of authority, there are things you must do because those ones are entrustment. That's why not all of us are in all positions. So sacrifice has a way of giving you clearance in the spirit realm. Those clearances are what we refer to atonement in this context. If 10 Christians are asking God for a position of authority, God will need some level of clearance to choose who can occupy it. Because he loves all of them equally, but they have to prove themselves that they are most qualified. If you study Revelation chapter 5, from verse 12. Let's read that scripture. Let me show you something. There are some things that you must be worthy to receive. Even Jesus had to be worthy and he did it as a pattern for us. He said, the voice said, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive. There are some things you can't receive until you are worthy. If you study Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, he said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. He's telling you that this thing is a pattern. And he began to show us what Jesus did. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Go to the next verse. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Go to the next verse. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming into the likeness of men. Next verse. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Next verse. He said, therefore, therefore, because of this sacrifice, he said, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. Are you seeing this? So there are things that you qualify for. There are other things that Jesus qualified on your account. Jesus qualified for you to receive eternal life. He qualified for you to receive forgiveness. He qualified for you to receive righteousness. But when it has to do with certain levels of position, he said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that in due season, he will exhort you. God will not exhort you because Jesus died for your sins. God will exhort you because you humble yourself. So there are certain things that you must qualify for. If you don't humble yourself, you will never be exhorted. In fact, if you are proud, the Bible said God airbus the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. So it's not everything that the sacrifice of Jesus will achieve for you. There are some things that your own sacrifice will do for you. And when I begin to show you the dimensions of sacrifice, I will show you that obedience is a sacrifice. I will show you that prayer is a sacrifice. I will show you that giving is a sacrifice. Because sacrifice is not just an offering. It also has to do with many things that you deny yourself so that you can have others. I will show you that dying to self is a sacrifice. There are some things that if you are full of self, God can give you. Although Jesus died for you, 
but your flesh will stop you from having it. Sacrifice. The power of sacrifice is that it is a tool of atonement. It qualifies you. It ranks you in the realm of God. If God comes into this service, he will not rank all of us because we are born again. He will rank all of us even by the date that we receive salvation. Somebody may receive salvation in 1991. Another one may receive salvation in 2021. You'll be shocked that the one in 2021 will be more ranking than the one who gave his life to Christ in 1991. Because the 91 candidate is still in primary one. God can't trust him. Give him money, he doesn't go to kingdom. Give him an assignment and a responsibility, he will never do it. They say, let's go for evangelism. He can never make the sacrifice. Oh, let's come for video and intercede for the nation. He can never come. But somebody gave his heart to, to Christ two years ago. He has won 1,000 souls. He has attended every video, interceding for nations. You think God wants to give promotion. He will now come and say, brother, wait. This one gave his heart to Christ 20 years ago. No way. Kingdom agenda demands that only those who are responsible can be entrusted with power. So there is a clearance level that is only sacrifice that can give to you. The third power of sacrifice is that it opens the door to blessings. There are certain blessings that cannot be given to you until you do certain sacrifices. You know why? Because such blessings are an entrustment. It's like the common wealth of Israel. God can give you enough to eat, to wear, and wear to lay your head. But when God wants to empower Christians in Abuja, if God wants to empower Christians in Nigeria, if God wants to empower Christians in Africa, he won't give it to all who are born again. He will give it to those whom if the money or the authority gets into their hand, Christians will truly benefit. And the way such people will prove that they are the ones is through the instrumentality of sacrifice. This is why sacrifice opens doors to certain blessings because those blessings are not a product of God's benevolence. They are actually an entrustment because that person has become a divine trust. The same way you have UNICEF is a trust. The money does not necessarily belong to them anymore. They keep it in custody for those who will need it. Anybody can put a million dollars with UNICEF and say, go and spend it. He knows that the money will be spent for orphans. It will be spent in places where there are wars and people are ravaged. If you also come and say, I, I know where they are fighting war. He will say, oh God, we don't trust you. This money is not a, a gift. It's an entrustment. That's, that's the type of blessing we are talking about here. And only sacrifices can open it. If you study 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4, the Bible said Solomon offered a thousand bond offering before the Lord. Immediately God showed up. Ask me whatever you want. People are asking God things, waiting for answer. God is asking others. That one is not for every Israelite. It's for the Israelite who can give a thousand bond offering. And please get this. It's not even about the number. It's about the percentage. Because what is a thousand bond offering for Solomon can be one cow to another person. And it can be a dove for another person. The thing is, how much can you release from your heart? Solomon released something from his heart. And when God saw him, he said, indeed, this one can be a custodian of the wealth of Israel. So when I bless this man, it's not about him. When I bless this man, it will be about the kingdom. It will be about Israel. Immediately God showed up. What do you want? Ask, I will give you. And true to God's discernment and discretion, Solomon didn't ask for anything personal. Because the sacrifice is a revelation of a heart posture. He said, you have given me a great people. I lack wisdom to lead them. He said, give me wisdom and understanding so that I'll be able to lead your people. And God said, you got it right. I'm not surprised after all. A man who can give a thousand bond offering is not thinking about himself. 
that kind of person is thinking about something bigger than himself. And he said, because you did not ask for riches, you did not ask for wealth, you did not ask for the life of your enemies. He said, in addition to what you have asked for. See, somebody will hear from God, this is it. In addition to what you have asked for, he said, I will give you. Oh my God. No wonder the guy became the wisest man until Jesus came. No wonder he became the wealthiest man. Kings of other nations came to give him gifts just to observe the things happening around. And when they come, they say half of the story is not told. Greater than we heard is what is going on here. Sacrifice. A thousand bond offering. You know what it means to slaughter one thousand cows and burn everything. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I love you. Lord, you are the king. Wow, you can do this. What do you want? The man proved that his heart was for the people. There are some things you can't give until you are thinking about God. There are some things you can't give until you are thinking about others. Do you know what it means to give 100 million for crusade? Do you know what it means to give 50 million for an agenda that impacts orphans, widows? Your name might not even be mentioned, but before you get to the level of having as much resources, sacrifices must have schooled your heart to depart from the boundary of selfless selfishness and come into the realm of selflessness. If you can't migrate from selfishness to selflessness, demonstrated through sacrifice, there are certain blessings your hand will never see. Please hear me. Don't kill yourself praying some prayers if your action is not corresponding. All this receiving prophecy, prophecy upon prophecy, and we are disobedient to the oracles of God. It's a joke. This year, breakthrough every side. No hard work. No diligent work, no planning, no thinking, no sacrifice. What will that prophecy rest? He said, I will bless the works of your hands. Where's the work? Where's the thinking? Where's the planning? Where's the sacrifice? So for some of us, prophecies have been hanging over us, but they cannot rest. They can't rest. As you are seated now, there are five companies inside you. But it cannot come alive. Too much selfishness. And so in this conference, God is enlarging our hearts. So that we can receive greater things. So that we can walk in greater measures and in greater dimensions.